Ah, the following video. The following video didn't record properly. I don't know what it was. There's something wrong with my PC. Either the processor was busy, but the capture device just started buffering and uh, dropping frames. I can't repeat it because the deed is done. It's one of those one-off things that comes along. You think everyone should know this. So you're going to have to put up with the video. But I encourage you to watch it because the actual content, <laughs> it's not a victory of style over content. It's a victory of content over style, this one. And if you take anything away from it, it can really save you time on um, wondering what's going on and debugging stuff which you know is playing you around and is messing about so watch the video if you don't like the video leave a comment so i shouldn't have published it or whatever but i think you might find the content interesting so it's coming now okay i just want to show you something about capacitors which you might not know you probably do but if you don't you might find it useful to get your stuff fixed because they are treacherous little buggers, to say the least. This one's the 47 microfarad 35 volt one from a Bose, but they could be from any equipment. And when you see them, many are okay, and you find, well, some are blown, some aren't. Why are those gone and those not? And sometimes there's two capacitors of exactly the same type on the board, and it's usually just one that's gone. And there's things that these things don't like. They don't like low voltages. If you've got a 35 volt capacitor being subject to three or four volts, it's not sufficient to keep the polarization and the capacitor will lose its capacitance. Um, things like AC ripple current, you know, things that use uh, as lossless droppers, you know, reactive droppers, uh, impedance in power supplies and things like that, and just to drop the current down, they don't like that either. And of course they can, or they might just be crap. But it's usually in one or two places that they fail. And quite often you can't, test, you can't actually check them in circuit unless you've got a really decent capacitance tester, the impedance of the rest of the circuit will, uh, will affect the reading. Yeah. If I just show you a behavior that they can exhibit, which can confuse you when you're diagnosing, and um, I didn't recognize this for a while when I was doing repairs, and what would happen was I would check, I often desolder the capacitor because you can't check some in circuit. Some you can, some you can't. This one you can, I've chosen this one because I know that you can check it in circuit. So usually when you can't check them in circuit, you get a very high reading or the thing will flash. You just, you know, there's too many alternative paths through the circuitry to actually make sense of what the capacitor is and the value. So it just comes up with a, a blank or some stupid reading, which is no relation to the what it says on the tin, as it were. And um, everyone says it's good to do what it says on the tin, but these don't. So if I just check this, this is a really quick video just to warn you about this evil underhanded behavior that they can exhibit and hopefully we can catch it on camera so anyway we've got the meter on you can see the capacitance meter if i just turn the lights down or off well that's not very good is it let's see we on auto exposure there you go so we've got some mood lighting for some moody electronics and if I just measure this capacitor in circuit, it's supposed to be a 30, 47 microfarad, 35 volt. And if I just measure it in circuit, 22 PF, that doesn't sound right. There you go. We've got 7.229 microfarads, right? Remember, 7.2 microfarads, and the ESR is all over the place. But we're across this capacitor, and it is a 47 microfarad, 35 volt, and it's measuring 7.22, right? So you can't test, you know, assume, present, pretend you can't test that capacitor in circuit, just for a moment. Just suspend your belief that you can test it in circuit. Say, so, right, I'm gonna have to desolder this because I can't test it in circuit. And what's happened to the picture? There it is. And so let's just take that cap off and see what happens to the capacitor, shall we? This is where they, are gonna cause you a problem if you believe what it says on the tin. Uh, right. So let's just get this off without burning anything. I might have to get over the top of it actually. I might get my bonts in the way. We don't want my bonts in the way, do we? Yeah, the problem has caught me out a few times when I've been out on site doing something for somebody. Emergency repair, even on a machine actually, one of these placement machines. Um, chip shooter type, all right, okay, and there's quite a few old chip shooters around that were made in the late 90s, which are still okay for small batch production and still pretty cheap to buy if you know how to fix them. 
and I do, unfortunately. And I wish I didn't sometimes. Empathy and all that. Right. So, it's been desoldered. Now, let's check it again. Right, so at the moment it was 7.2, wasn't it? 7.22 in the board. And I know I can measure that capacitor in the board, so this isn't... Forget the board. Forget the actual circuitry in the board, because this you can measure in the board. This only uses a 300 millivolt. Can you see that? A 300 millivolt um, wave to actually assess the capacitance. So we're all right there. So we know that. And uh, now if I just test it now. 31. 31 microfarads. You can see it's dropping down slightly. But we've got 30 microfarads now. So what's happened to this capacitor? This thing with etched aluminium... Uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, this thing with etched aluminium plates, so they're chemically etched and they've got all sorts of uh, interesting structures inside to get the capacitance, and then they fill them up with an electrolyte juice. And so you've got a microscopic structure of two plates close together, insulated by the actual aluminium oxide, but the aluminium oxide is, is grown in kind of legs. If it's, uh, it, it looks more like the surface of a hairbrush if you magnify these capacitors, and then the electrolyte goes in between. But now we've got 33 microfarads and we had 7.22 before. So, okay, let's see if we can improve it a bit more, shall we? And you'll get an idea about what's going on here. But this, I've taken caps out, measured them, thought, oh, that's all right, put it back, and the bloody thing starts working. You think, what's going on there? How come that is working? And uh, there we are. How come that's working? Why is it still working? Well, I think you'll get the idea now, aren't you? A liquid inside... Give it a bit of heat for a while. Give it a good hot bath. Oh, most most things work better after a hot bath, let's face it. Right, so she's good and toasty now. Bit of heat. Right, there we go. So we're giving her a bit of a cook up and then Go back to the old mode. Bom, 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 bom. Headline figures coming your way soon. How's that? Oh, for goodness sake. There we are. Capacitor is there. Focus, you focusing thing. Yeah. Right. Here we go. I'm sure you shouldn't do this on top of an instrument, but you know, you know how it is. See what we got. We had 33 a minute ago. We're giving it a bit more of a hot bath, upside down hot bath. Now it's 35 microfarads. But you can see it's dropping, okay? But this one was quite bad because it was 7.22, but quite often these caps can re re recover almost completely. And, yeah, so a hot bath boils up the fluid and, and just rejuvenates it all because the fluid has to be in contact with the... The dielectric of the fluid is quite high, so if the fluid is throughout the capacitor against all the little tiny... Um, I suppose you call them dendrites, kind of, uh, the effect on the, on the... on the plates insulated by aluminium oxide. And, yeah, so you, you, put, you, take, you think, oh, this is not working, can't measure this in circuit, take it out, check it, it's alright, put it back, and then the thing's working, you think, well, why is that working? And I twigged this, and the actual equipment went on working for six months, and I went back and I thought, well, last time I fixed this, I just took the cap out, and this time I'd sussed out what was going on, but you know, I'd had this happen to me a couple of times. So when you, uh, the bottom line is, I mean, it's not rocket science, if you want solder a capacitor, an electrolytic one, like this, that's going to get a lot of heat inside when you're soldering, don't believe the value once you've taken it off the board because it's not a realistic test and if you put it back um, they can recover fully and if you put it back on the board uh, six months later or a month later or a week later it'll dry out and all the fluid will go on the bottom and what happened to it before will happen again and you'll end up with low capacity and a problem and a failure so mm, if you can't check it on the board and you know it can be checked on the board check it on the board you can invest in one of these things these are quite good the old hand tech I like this.
I like this. I'll show you about caps one day, or if you don't know, you might find it interesting how a cap isn't a cap isn't a cap. These aluminium things vary massively when you start getting up to sort of reasonable frequencies of say 100 kilohertz, and I'll demonstrate that to you. I'll get some various caps out and we'll have a go with the old hand tech at some point. I might keep making these promises. But what you can get is um, one of these things. Where's the case for it? Here it is. Now I bought a Unity because they're actually quite good. I've got Unity meters which have lasted and still going strong after almost 20 years. And I trust them as a brand. I don't think they're as good a electronics measurement company as Handtech. Handtech are good. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is not bad actually. And this can check most things in circuit. And it's about 23 quid from AliExpress. And it arrived in about 10 days. I mean, I bought it a while ago. But when you pull this off, you want a sheath there. And there you are, you get your probes and you can I'm on there. And it's not bad, it'll, it'll measure this cap all right, and it's within you know a couple of microfarads, but it's good enough for jazz for decoupling capacitors and just checking ordinary electrolytics, and resistors actually. I quite like this, it's a bit difficult to use because the, the, the probes, I'll say the pubes. <laughs> and uh, what you've got on the probes though is this. These are side legs, which you can take off, but you can just, it comes with a couple of leads like that. And then you've got your, uh, for, you know, obviously things not micro Henry's, but, uh, you know, you can go around probing things there on the board and looking at the display. But it's quite, quite good. Quite For 23 quid, it's a much better, um, use, more useful thing for checking over a board. So I quite like that too. And also it fits in my tool bag when I go away, if I'm going out. You never know, if you go to a, an Airbnb, the telly might break down and I might be swoop into action. So that's that. Anyway, don't trust these things once you've desoldered them because they will cover their value when they get hot. And if you like this, then hit the little titty button down there to the subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, then leave me a like. I'd appreciate that. And uh, yeah, have a nice day.